Hey guys, this video includes some of my favorite mods to enhance your character and NPCs of Skyrim. I do use all of these for my showcase videos, so I thought it could be fun to go over them in some more detail. I'll briefly tell something for each mod that I'll show. Now would I advise to use all of these together for a longer, more serious playthrough? Probably not. There's nothing wrong with these mods, but I'd personally say it's a few too many mods to have for just the characters. Regardless, I hope this might give you an idea for some mods or some combinations of these mods. The very first one I use is Race Menu. Race Menu adds a lot more control to your character creation with a better interface and a lot more options than you originally had. More custom colors, multiple war paints for your face, better zooming options and a function to cast light on your character's face for more detail. There's also an option to save a preset and a lot more other options that you originally didn't have. If you do however have problems with the race menu, for example crashes or freezes around the race menu, it usually means it loads in too many mods at the same time. I'll leave another mod in the description that might solve that. The second mod for this list is bug fixes. This fixes a number of bugs that has nothing to do with characters, but has included fixed lip sync. Fixed lip sync makes the dialogue and character of characters more in sync with their lip movement. Sir. <laughs> How quaint. When that's done, I usually start with the hair mod. I choose a Pashi Sky hair for this. I choose the main fell, the female fell, and the male fell. I choose this mod because it has a wide range of hairstyles, and there will be another mod on this list that uses these hairstyles on NPCs. After the Pashi Sky hairs, I install the Pashi Sky hair natural retextures. And this makes the Pashi Sky hair look a lot better and more natural, like the name suggests. Now there are other hair mods that I like, for example KS Herdos, which can be used with the mod HDT Physics extension to add physics to the hair. However, I simply don't really like the physics on the hair that come with it. And I also think that there aren't very good NPC overhauls that implement KS Herdos either. So that leaves you stuck with loads of hairstyles just for your own character. Apache Sky hair has a lot more to offer for this list. Next I transform the looks of all the bodies. I start with the mod Better Mills, Nudes. You can choose whatever version of course, I choose the underwear version for this. This makes the male characters overall look better, and it adds new skin textures and new feet meshes. And it also changes some aspects of the, of the face. Different files and versions of this mod do different things, so you will have to check which one you like the best. Better Mill mods are rare to find. But this one could be pretty much all you need. For females I choose the UMP Replacer Configuration Package. This is a package with many of the UMP and UMPB body options available. Some people might say that the CBBE model is superior, especially with the body sliders. I however still think UMP has most compatibilities with other mods and looks the most female friendly I guess. It's probably more of a preference. If you like UMP or UMPB, I'd really advise to use the UMP configuration package and see what you like. I usually choose the normal UMP with the all-in-one face. For fitness level, I choose the UMP fitness body without apps. I don't pick sweaty skin myself, but I do choose uh, the no more bronze shine. I don't install animations or skeletons, if I use a skeleton I take the XP32 maximum skeleton from its original page. If you do take the bouncing animations, the animations might look a little weird on UMP, but much better on UMPB. If you went in game and didn't like the mix that you choose, you can simply uninstall and reinstall this mod again and pick another mix that you might like. For the children I use the RS children mod. This makes the children look more in place with all the overall NPCs. Hi lady! Would you like to buy some flowers? Please? I also really advise to look up Takimoon's more adoptable children, which adds a few new children from different races to the game. Really? Do you... Do you have a place I could live? Oh well... Thanks anyway, I suppose. The next three mods change some races. There are many mods for this, but these are my favorites. These will interfere with the better male mod, since that mod already changes some aspects of these races. However, the next three mods should get priority over that. 
For the male Khajiits, I like to use the muscular Khajiit textures. This makes the male Khajiit look stronger and adds stripes to the skin. There is a version without the stripes as well. You can try and use SC Khajiits together with this, which is a good looking Khajiit mod. However, some Khajiits their heads and body might not go as well together with this. For a female Khajiit I use the feminine Khajiit. Feminine Khajiit looks decent for females and comes with a fitness level and skin textures. You can choose between stripes or a leopard skin during the installation of this mod. I think the stripes version looks a little more in place with the muscular Khajiits for the males. Alternatively, look into clover Khajiits. This is a Khajiit mod that most popular showcasers seem to recommend and seem to do the best of all the Khajiit 3 textures mods on the Nexus. And for the Argonians, I choose the Far Argonian race mod. This simply retextures the skin. The author tried to make the looks of this Argonian mod close to the real reptilian family. The male skin looks like it has scales and looks like the skin of a crocodile. The female skin has some smoother looks and resembles a snake-like skin. And you can choose two different textures for the, for the female skin. This mod has an optional fell for higher quality reptilian eyes as well. This might not be as straightforward to install as other mods are, so be sure to read the readme if you are interested in this Argonian retexture. Finally, for elf races I choose the ethereal elven overhaul, which makes the elven races look a lot more appealing to me. This is especially nice for creating your own elf character. If you like these ethereal elves, be sure you look at the optional patches. If you use the unofficial Skyrim Legendary Edition patch, you will need a patch for that as well, found on another page. And of course, I'll, I'll link that as well. There are a lot of custom races that I like, but I won't go over those in this video. For the next few mods I choose the clothing. I personally like some of the female characters to have a little bit of sex appeal without them walking around butt naked or with nothing but lingerie. The mod UMP mini dress collection adds a little more appeal to the female characters. I personally like this level of semi skimpy, but it might already be too unrealistic for some of course. Together with this mod I choose the HD version in the optional file, which obviously makes the clothes look better. You can also choose to give this mod HTT physics support. And while we're at it, let us also use the mod improved NPC clothing and the standalone on that page for additional clothing. But don't let it override the mini skirt collection or static mesh improvement mod if you use that. This will make most of the other clothing untouched by the UMP mini skirt collection have higher quality textures. Perhaps if you don't like either of the mods I just mentioned, but you do want better clothing, rustic clothing or opulent outfits could be mods to look into. And now I choose some animations. When I don't use Fnis, I usually choose the lifelike idol animation mod. This animation mod looks really well considered, it doesn't need Fnis or a custom skeleton. And when I do use Fnis, I personally like the Fnis player exclusive animations mod. This will add exclusive animations for the player and includes a number of existing animations from other mods that can be turned on and off in the MCM menu. I know of newer animation mods with more variation, but I personally still like this one a lot. These animations also seem to be the most compatible with other mods that I use, like Legacy of the Dragon Lord. For female sitting animations I like the mod Sit Animation. The pretty sit idol is also a nice looking sit animation. However, keep in mind that some of these sitting animations can clip pretty badly with some sitting spaces. And these mods of course require a custom skeleton. XP32 maximum skeleton with HDT is normally my preferred pick when I choose a skeleton. Now I choose a number of mods that improve the quality on the face. First up is high resolution scars. This has a better quality of scars compared to the vanilla ones. Painterly has improved quality war paints. It now actually looks like paint. The mod Browse retextures the Browse. It looks more in place with the uh, new hairs. And the next mod, Beards of Skyrim. 
This of course has better quality beards and also goes well with the improved hair. The Eyes of Beauty has tons of new eyes that have a very high level of detail. Some almost look real, while others have more of a fantasy look to it. Smile in HD makes the teeth of all the humanoids appear a lot better while in dialogue and for example on smiling characters. Smile in HD only covers humanoids, so I use the 83 Willows whiter teeth for the bestial races. First install 83 Willows, then install Smell in HD if you are interested in these mods. And finally, female facial animation enhances the facial expressions of the females. This goes well together with Smell in HD. Some of these mods that I went over here work with custom races, vampires and werewolves as well, but be sure to look for patches. Now that's done, I finished the NPCs with some overhauls. All by all, these overhauls mess with a lot of characters. Some of these mods will enhance the same character. So if by any chance you like to have multiple of these NPC overalls, you have to choose which mod characters gets priority over another. I myself, for example, choose not to override anything that changes ethereal elves, unless the author says otherwise. If I would, the bodies and face skins might not match. My first mod I usually install is the NPC overall version 1. This will not only make almost all of the more important NPCs' faces look better, it also adds the Apache Sky hair to a lot of the NPCs. This will change hundreds of NPCs. The comes. Then I choose the Improved Bards mod. This will give some bards in the Bards College a more unique and better look. This one is compatible with Ethereal Elves if keeping to the load order uh, the author suggests. Next, I very much like to use the College of Winterhalls NPC Improvement mod. This redesigns the College of Winterhalls NPCs. I use this mod together with the immersive College of Winterhold. This overall are two really nice mods to overhaul the College of Winterhold and its NPCs. And finally I choose the three mods Bitchin Wives, Bitchin NPCs and Bitchin War Maidens. I'd say I prioritize these above all the other ones I mentioned. The author of these three mods is still working on this and adding new NPCs. These mods will only rework female characters, but all of these NPCs look really good. The Bitchin Wives will rework the possible spouses, Bitchin NPCs and War Maidens will improve some female guild members and other important NPCs. I personally think many of these Bitchin NPCs look the best out of all the NPC overalls I know of. I'm not gonna be too detailed about the NPCs included in this mod. There are videos for the Bitchin mods in the mods description for a lot better detail of the characters included in this mod. These three Bitchin mods also come from the author of the follower mods Tukati, Shakon and Vivak. I probably pronounced those names horribly. I think those follower mods are one of the prettiest looking female follower mods as well. The author of these mods just really has a knack for making uh, nice looking characters. Now like I said, I personally wouldn't use all of these mentioned mods together on a serious playthrough. Not saying you can't, just wouldn't really advise it. I wanted to overall the NPCs and characters up to a level Vanilla Skyrim couldn't compete with. I'm also quite curious how this fares compared with uh, remastered characters and NPCs. Also know that many mods that require Fnis can conflict with other mods and are generally pretty heavy for Skyrim to handle. Of course, if you really like, you can even extend this list with more bar paint, more type of scars, better makeup, enhanced character edits or even more hair mods if you feel you need to. I also didn't touch custom races, werewolves and vampires in this video. I feel I could dedicate separate videos from werewolves, vampires and custom races. Anyway, I think the mods I went over in this video will make your character and NPCs look a lot better already. Most of these mods come with different quality of textures, so if you want to try some out on a low-end machine, you might be able to enjoy some of these as well. I leave all the mods I mentioned in the description below and finish this with some more shots. Thanks for watching and see you all later. Together we will vanquish any foe.
interested, don't blame it on me. The men in White Run have proposed to me. Some were even single. They'll never understand. It's exhilarating to observe the effects of my potions on the body. Watching the heart stop, the eyes go blind. We're made up of thousands of parts with thousands of different functions all working in tandem to keep us alive. Yet if only a single part of our imperfect machine fails, life fails. It makes one realize how fragile, how flawed we are. You ask why I'm so fascinated? The irony. The irony that the same world that gave us life provides us the means to die. 